So what brought on the whole, the missionary side of what you do with Feed My Sheep? Where, where did the Feed My Sheep, where did that all start? Feed My Sheep Today, that started in 2012, 2012, where I was giving out free Bibles to my subscribers. That's how it started. And I would... I would do, um, I would put in my videos. A lot of these old videos are not on YouTube no more because I had to scrub my channel for the fourth time, like this past week. I had to scrub the videos because of the algorithms are updating. Okay. I'd probably have over 3,000 videos right now if I never deleted anything. So Feed My Sheep Today, essentially the origins of it started with me offering to give people free Bibles anywhere on the planet. And if they, if they said, said to me, I need a Bible, I personally, Gary, would give them out a free Bible. So I, was, I, would, I would personally be sending out free Bibles from my home to people here in the United States and overseas. Okay. And that got pretty expensive <laughs> doing that. Not, not so, it wasn't so bad here in the United States, but it was overseas that was getting me. So I was Especially doing that. On eight more than one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I was uh, I was maxing out credit cards, taking out loans to keep keep going with that, working overtime. So Feed My Sheep Today was funded by me for like the first two years. And it was all funded by me. I never get anything in return. Then I had a friend of mine who I was friends with online, and they were uh, subscribers of mine, and they were sending me some of the dreams. And they had a missionary person that they were supporting in India. His name is Raj Karada. All right. He is our first missionary. And they were wondering if I would be able to send him a box of Bibles. Okay. I was like, yeah, I can do that. And does it want it in English or what, what uh, language? And he chose the Oriya language, which they got 300 languages in India, but the Oriya would probably be like the best bet. So I go on Bible Society, had tried to find these Uriah Bibles, had to do all this crazy stuff, which wasn't easy to do. Then I have to buy, pay for them overseas, and they'll ship them over here and ship them over there. And just, you know, all this money is being spent before he gets the box of Bibles. And hopefully they don't steal them out of the uh, post office when they get there. So <laughs> so it, 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 I was like, man, I was like, so we were doing that. And uh then somebody came along and said, hey, Bob, can we help you do that? And uh, her name was Deborah Horseman. I never forget her name. And she said, I will let me send you something on PayPal. You got PayPal? I was like, yeah, sure. So she sent me $35 to help pay for Bibles. And then she said, Bob, you need to ask your subscribers to help you do this. I was like, eh, I won't be one of those guys. You know, I don't, but you know what? I'm not getting paid to do this. So, yeah, you know, I, I think it might be pretty cool. We all start pulling our money together, and I could just kind of be the guy that oversees it, and we could start buying some serious Bibles. And look, this guy, Raj, really wanted to get out there, become a missionary, a big missionary in India to reach a lot of people. He just didn't have the funding or the, or the stuff that he needed. So I was like, you know what? Maybe we can put start pulling money together and helping Raj in India. So that's what I started doing. I put out, I put out a video, say, hey, if you need a Bible, I can send you a Bible. And if you want to help distribute Bibles here in the United States and around the world, you can send money to this address or this PayPal, whatever. And then people began going along with it. They loved the idea. And then other people who were, um, they say, I don't have any money I can give right now, but I like to give out a Bible down the road. If someone needs a Bible, let me know, Bob. Send me their information and I'll send them a Bible. I thought that was a great idea because now people are chiming in to help. And when people give me their Bible requests, I just forward their request to the next person in line on our list that volunteered to give out free Bibles. So now I'm, I'm like facilitating this stuff now. The Lord is sending workers into the vineyard to help me now. So that's how that got started. So we now we have a gigantic list of people now that we do get Bible requests. And it's, it's nice because we have people who were in other countries, say like Germany, people who lived in, uh, people lived in Pakistan, people who lived in Israel. 
Okay, say, hey, I live here in this country. I live here in this country. If anybody needs a re- needs a Bible in this country, let me know, and I'll send it to them. And that's been and that's worked out beautifully because now we get international requests. I say, hey, I got some in your country. I got some in your country, and and then we start organizing and orchestrating all this stuff. So now this thing is it's like turning into like a real a real ministry now. But that, and that that essentially was it. All, all it did from that point, Gary, was it just grew. We started bringing on more missionaries and more missionaries. We kept on duplicating what we were doing. And that's what we did. We just duplicated it and duplicated, duplicated, duplicated it. And we started bringing on orphanages. We take care of, we ha- we take care of orphanages in Africa and stuff like that, in Pakistan, other countries now. So a lot of orphanages we take care of. We sponsor these orphanages and all these other types of work that the Lord is bringing to us. It was amazing because when it was all said and done, Gary, we had 12 missionaries that showed up that were heads, head missionaries. Okay. Just like Jesus had the 12 apostles, we had 12 missionaries. And it's been that way for years. We can never find anybody else that would come on board or anybody that would work out. We can never go beyond that 12. Okay. But these 12, just like the 12 apostles, God establishing this government, number 12, he did the same thing to feed my sheep today. So we have 12 missionaries that are heads of all their location in their countries. And underneath those missionaries are missionaries and evangelists and preachers and teachers and churches and volunteers and workers. I'm like these huge organizations underneath these missionaries now. India, we have under one missionary, we have over 1,500 churches now in india alone now okay so that's uh essentially what the lord did with feed my sheep today and of course that was 2012 by 2016 we had to take on a 501c3 status because the irs stepped in <laughs> you know by all the money i was going through my account you know sending all this stuff out i don't keep any of the money it just goes through my account but then PayPal shut me down because, hey, you're obviously you're running, a, a, you're running a business. This is too much money for somebody to be doing personally. So I had a basically that was the Lord say, hey, set up, feed my sheep today as a five hundred one c three. So we did that in July of uh, two thousand sixteen. So that's when corporately. Well, happy anniversary! It's July. <laughs> yeah. <Happy anniversary. laughs> So that's when so that's when Feed My Sheep today took on a, a corporate face. You know, it was recognized by the government. And whether well, that's a good thing or a bad thing, be it as it may. So mm-hmm. that enabled us now to expand into everything. I mean, we just expand, expand. We're doing stuff here in the States now. It's just insane. It's the Holy Spirit now. Does I lose track of everything here? What everybody's doing, missionaries are achieving and everything. We have help now. We got people working for us now. And all kinds. Of, I mean, this is a big operation. You got fleets of cars and trucks and country, d- several different countries. We have fleets of cars and trucks running stuff everywhere now. And it's just huge operation now. And it just uh, thank God for the Holy Spirit because there's so much going on. What I've seen from the numbers, I did the average is about 70 salvations per hour that is being achieved through Feed My Sheep today. 70 salvations per hour so that gives that puts us around 1700 people per day getting saved through feed my sheep today and their operations it probably probably could have grown by now but i think that's a big deal because um the average church in america i see the numbers like six salvations per year that's what they see unless you're going to a much better church like a church i went to is a mega church and they did pretty well they would actually see about four to five thousand salvations per year so they did pretty good. But the Feed My Sheep today, it's, that's 1,700 salvations in one day. <laughs> you know, and that's the average that we're running right now. Only the Holy Spirit can do that. I can't take credit for this. You know, I was just the guy that facilitated it and pushed it and, you know, took the risks. Building these big professional websites, the financial infrastructure that is integrated into them. And when it comes to tax season, forget about it. It's not fun at all. It really takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of countless hours, a lot of work to build something like this and a lot of risks that people are not willing to take. But we had a lot of challenges building this. 
like dealing with the government, tons of red tape, all the things that the government brought upon me, my family, trying to scare me and do all kinds of stuff and all the challenges and, and all the time. This took me an extra 20 to 30 hours a week above and beyond my job to build this thing. And then when it really started taking off, I couldn't keep up. We had to start bringing on employees. And a real fun one we had to deal with was all the transfer companies that would take us on and then they would drop us after they find out that we are supporting Christian missions and giving out free Bibles in third world countries. Western Union, they dropped us because we were giving out free Bibles. Their exact words. I'll be honest, totally didn't see that coming. So we had problems with all the, the transfer companies moving money overseas. They, they canceled, everybody canceled us everywhere we went. You know, it became very difficult to, to send money overseas. So there's this whole thing you gotta learn how to do to be able to do that without looking like, you know, a, uh, you know somebody from Pakistan wrote to blow stuff up, you know what I mean? Because when you send money overseas, that's the way they look at you. So now it's like, you know, it's tricky. It's very tricky, and no one was able to tell me what to do. I had to figure it all out on my own. It's a pretty hard road to get to yeah. where we're at right now. So I think it's remarkable because you know how it is. You could, we could get so caught up in what we're doing to where, uh, especially doing online stuff, to where you forget about the face-to-face -face boots on the ground mm -hmm. over on the other side of the globe, somebody needing something as simple as the Word of God, you know? And trying to figure out, and, and you and God put your heads together and, and try to figure out, well, lo the logistics, I mean, it's a logistical nightmare. How in the world, Lord, can we get something from here all the way over there? And like you said, not to look suspicious, trying to do it, you know, give to Caesar what's Caesar and, and try to follow the law the way the laws are written and at the end of the day, try to glorify God in, in your actions. I mean, it's remarkable because, you know, a lot of times we get so caught up in, well, I'm doing YouTube, I'm doing media, and then you don't think to look up and, and help your fellow man. And it seems like God's got you stretched in multiple directions, uh, dealing with the online and, the, uh, and then dealing with the boots on the ground too. So I think that's awesome. Yeah, they, uh, one point I didn't make is we don't send the Bibles to our missionaries overseas anymore. We still send Bibles out to individual requests and stuff like that, but not to our missionaries who are distributing them among their organizations. We don't do that anymore. I stopped doing that back in 2014, <laughs> back in 2014, 15. What we do now is if funding comes in, we, we send the money directly to the corporate missionary heads and then they buy the bibles in their locations and the bibles that they get are far better than the bibles i find at bible society or anything here at a dollar store whatever they find these big beautiful bibles and they're only they know over there things are cheap these countries man two dollars for a big beautiful bible and where something like that will cost you about fifty dollars here in the states okay Two dollars, three dollars overseas, big stacks. We go on if you go on our, our videos, feed my sheep today, YouTube channel on a website or whatever, or even my main channel, my post content, you see the Bibles that they buy. Big, beautiful, nice looking Bibles. Okay. And they're extremely cheap, about two to three dollars a piece. And it worked out so much better, just sending them the money and just be done. <laughs> you know, they're able to buy everything they need. They can buy humanitarian relief aid. And that's the other thing, too. The Lord expanded the whole operation. He went far beyond just the Bibles. Started getting into blankets, starting to get into humanitarian relief aid of all sorts, food, medical supplies, um, and stuff like that, and mattresses for children, and uh, food bags for, like, the widows, and, you know, stuff like that, and uh, feminine products for the girls at the orphanage. I mean, the Lord just took control of all that. The people are asking me, is it okay that we spend money on this, this and that for these people? I was like, look, you don't have to ask me every time. All right. <laughs> Just I'm trusting that the Holy spirit leads you. All right. And you know what to do. You don't have to come get my permission, everything you do. Okay. And just like we talked about earlier in the beginning of this broadcast, Gary is that Holy spirit threat is in all of us. Okay. 
So that Holy Spirit thread in all of us, the same as in those people who are working for us, I trust the Holy Spirit thread to lead them to do what they need to do with the money. And besides, we 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 audit everybody every year. Everybody, all the missionaries, everybody gets audited. We audit everybody because we do that through looking at all the content that comes to us on the hard drive. They send us hard drives now. They send me, they, they try to send me stuff, emails. It's just too much. I was like, hey, everybody send me a hard drive at the end of the year. So a big hard drive show up, like 12 different hard drives coming in all over, all over the world. And then I go through all the content. There's so much content, Gary. I mean, I mean, I think when you look at my YouTube channel and Feed My Sheep Today channel, our website, that probably is only maybe about 10% of the content or even less than that. I'd probably say it's 7% of the content that's actually coming in. So we have to go through all that stuff and say, this is the best picture. This is the best picture. This is the best picture. And that's tough when you got thousands of pictures and videos, you know. So that's what, once again, Holy Spirit comes there i got people helping me do that now and they're led by the holy spirit so that's why if you want to do something like this folks don't think that you oh i'm not good enough i can't do stuff like that you know no yes you can and especially it's something like what we do here you just have to trust the holy spirit to run everybody on your team if you want to do anything for the lord the best thing to do is to team up with other believers okay Ask the Lord what you want what you want to do. Ask him, what do you want me to do? And then if he starts opening the doors, okay, you will start doing stuff. But when it becomes too overwhelming, it's like, oh, I just want to quit. It becomes too much. Look, the reason why it's becoming too much is because God's saying, hey, you need help now. Okay, you need help now. You need help with this. You need help with this. You know, I used, all the stuff that's being done now with the corporation now there's no way that's like it would take about 10 of me to do what it takes to run feed my sheep today now okay 20, 10 of me 16 hours a day that's what it would take now hey family if you're enjoying this interview you can go watch the full interview at gary and angina's gates channel not so random acts of kindness the link is below or just click the card above and when you get there make sure to subscribe because they are doing interviews now with a lot of key people that you follow here on YouTube like all of the uptime panelists brother Chris from global rapture watchers and many more and many of your favorites to come so subscribe to their channel now so you don't miss them and you won't miss out on what the Lord is revealing about the end times and the rapture resurrection here at their channel not so random acts of kindness so hit that link below or the card above go to their channel right now and subscribe and position yourself and your family to be blessed